1920. Hey guys, my hey guys, my name is Scobie and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to install the Rango F. This means we won't need dev mode for the installation process. I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do everything. Let's jump right into this. Give one little warning when actually doing using Durango FTP or any other apps that we're going to be installed. So at the moment, I haven't had any issue with Durango FTP or any other emulators I've installed on my retail mode of my So I would err on the side of caution if you're anyway worried about Microsoft stamping down on this in the future. It's best to avoid it. Or if you're like me and you want to take a bit more security, I would recommend creating a burner Xbox account or having an account that's not your main account. And you can still access everything once it's installed on your local Xbox, even on your other account, which can be an extra layer of added security. But just keep in mind, there can be some risks involved when doing something like this. From this point, what we're going to be doing is opening up our Xbox. We're going to be clicking the Y button and we're going to be searching for Edge. And what we're going to be doing is opening up Microsoft Edge. And we need to make sure we're on the latest version of the Xbox to get this, to make sure we're on the latest version, the full desktop version of Microsoft Edge. From this point, if it is your first time opening up Edge, you might have to accept a couple things to actually be able to launch it. And then we should be brought inside Edge. From this point, what we're going to be doing is navigating to this URL right here, gamr13.github.io. Simply need to come to this URL and you'll be brought to a page, something similar like this. From this point, we're going to be scrolling down all the way to the bottom and we're going to be looking for Durango FTP. And this is going to be the FTP client we're going to be installing on our Xbox. From this point, we need to come to the download app button right here. We're going to be clicking the A button to open this up and should automatically open up the store with the application. Now, I will mention at this point, if you do get a black screen or it won't open for some reason, most of my issues when actually trying to do this, and then you should be going and then come back just restart your Xbox, it should fix most of your issues. Then simply navigate back to the screen and open up Durango FTP again. From this point, we're gonna be coming to the get section right here. We're gonna be clicking the A button to actually get the application. We can simply click got it. And now it should start to install on our Xbox. From this point, Durango FTP should be installed. We can simply click the Y button and just search for FTP. And we should see Durango FTP right here. We're simply gonna be clicking the A button to launch it. And now Durango FTP should open up on our Xbox. Now from this point, we're gonna be brought to this basic UI. Here we have a port. We have the option to allow anonymous. Below this, we'll have our FTP name and our FTP password. If you would like to have username and password to access the FTP, this is totally up to you. However, I'm just gonna be clicking to allow anonymous, but you can feel free to set this up how you want. Whenever you're ready to start your FTP and you're happy with your settings, you can simply click the start button here in the bottom left. Now, one extra thing to mention on the top right here, we can see the local app data storage. And at the moment that is currently limited to 30 gigabytes. So we are limited to 30 gigabytes inside the FTP of this app. So that is one thing to keep in mind that is one of the disadvantages to retail mode versus dev mode, which you can access a lot more storage. From this point, our FTP is up and running and here you'll be able to access it from any number of devices. So in the past, I've already done a full dedicated video on how to access it from your Android device. I will leave a card on screen. I'll be linking that in the description down below. But for the rest of today's video, we're going to be installing FileZilla on PC. I'm going to be showing you how to remotely access it to it on a desktop. So in the middle here of the screen, we will see addresses of this device. And just below this, underneath our Xbox name, we will see an IP and some extra information here below. And we're actually going to be needing this to access the FTP and transfer files to the internal storage on our Xbox. So I'm gonna be blurring this out and hiding this, although you will need this to access these files a little bit later. So what I'm gonna be using for today's video is FileZilla. I'll be leaving a download link in this in the description down below. It is gonna be free to you, so you don't need to worry about that. We're gonna be coming here to quick download links. We're gonna be downloading the FileZilla client. It's gonna automatically pick up that we're on Windows. Simply click download here. It'll then give us this pop-up and we're gonna be using the free version, the first one here on the left. Simply click download and then our download will begin. From this point, you simply need to locate to your downloaded .exe file. I have mine on my desktop right here. Double click to install it. Click yes on the pop-up. Once this pop-up comes up, we're gonna be clicking I agree. Here's where they do add a bit of bloatware to this. We're simply gonna be declining this unless you actually want this, but most people will not simply click decline. Click next. You can choose if you want to install it on the whole computer or just for you. For me, I'm just going to be choosing just for me. Once you have this selected, click next. You can now feel free to enable and check on any of these options as well. Simply click next again and then choose your install location. Once you're happy, click next and finally click install. We can leave start FileZilla now checked, click finish and then FileZilla is going to open up. From this point in the host section, we're simply going to be entering the URL that was showed up on our Xbox underneath the addresses on this device. We're then going to be looking for the port. Once this is entered, we're going to be coming to the port and the port should be set up automatically in Durango FTP as 21. So unless you change it, this should work. And from this point, we're simply going to be clicking quick connect, click OK, 
and then we should be connected to our Xbox. So how FileZilla works, here on the left we have our computer, and on the right we have the file location that we're connecting to, which is our Xbox. So here we can see all of our Xbox folders. And just like that with FileZilla, we're able to access the internal storage on our Xbox. From this point, you can move over any of the necessary files to your Xbox that you would like. So if you're gonna be doing some emulator stuff, you can feel free to move over any games or BIOS files. Otherwise, you can do anything else you want here using the internal storage on your Xbox. Anyway, guys, I wanna take this moment to give a huge shout out to the channel members, Sean Daly, Liz Lingus, and Q43OL. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. If you'd like to have your name shout out in future videos or some other perks, be sure to click the join button on any video on the channel. It would really help me out. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, as always, keep it saucy. Peace.